Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today, we'll be diving into an action thriller film franchise titled Jack Reacher. Enjoy the recap. Later, a scene unfolds outside a local diner where a group of people are gathered. Four men lay beaten on the ground. When the police arrive, a witness describes the unlikely scenario where one man single-handedly took down all four aggressors. Sheriff Raymond Wood and his deputy step inside the diner, finding none other than Jack Reacher perched on a stool, traces of blood adorning his face. Wood proceeds to cuff Reacher, ready to haul him off to the station, but then Reacher throws him a curveball. He asserts that in precisely 90 seconds, the phone will ring, and it will be Wood wearing the cuffs, arrested for kidnapping and trading undocumented immigrants on military land. Like clockwork, the phone rings, Wood answers, revealing his identity. Moments later, military police vehicles roll onto the scene. Wood's eyes fixate on Reacher, a sense of disbelief washing over him as he is led away in handcuffs. Once again, Jack slips away, hitchhiking his way to a nearby motel. Inside his room, Reacher connects with Major Susan Turner on the phone, the one who had assisted him in nabbing Wood. Not to mention their successful collaboration on previous cases. They agree to meet up at Reacher's former office later in the week. Arriving at the military HQ, Reacher expects to find Turner waiting for him. Instead, he's met with Colonel Morgan sitting behind the desk. Morgan drops a bombshell. Turner has been arrested on suspicion of espionage. Reacher consults with Sergeant Leach, trying to find a competent lawyer who can help clear Turner's name. Reacher approaches Colonel Moorcroft, appealing for his assistance to free Turner. Moorcroft flatly refuses. To add to Reacher's troubles, Moorcroft reveals a paternity suit lodged against the military, asserting that Reacher is the father of a daughter from a past relationship with a woman named Candace Dayton. With a stern retort for Moorcroft to remember what his uniform stands for, Reacher exits, leaving Moorcroft to think about his duties. As Reacher steps outside, he senses the familiar prickle of being watched. Realizing he's being followed, he ducks into a local cafe, noticing a suspicious car pulling up. He stealthily maneuvers his way toward the vehicle, neutralizing the first thug with a swift knockout and intimidating the other. A quick glance at the man's wallet gives Reacher the intel he needs, and he's on his way. He then pays a distant visit to his proposed daughter, observing her from afar. As darkness covers the city, Reacher continues his watch. But when he steps outside, she spots him, casting him off as a creep. Unbeknownst to Reacher, a man known as the Hunter watches this interaction, deducing that Reacher may have a vulnerable spot after all. The following day brings an unexpected development. Moorcroft experiences a change of heart, providing Reacher with a file on two soldiers, Sibeli and Murkovich. The pair were slain at close range in Afghanistan, and there are murmurs that Turner might have had a hand in their deaths. However, the hunter confronts Moorcroft in his home, coercing him into confessing exactly what information he shared with Reacher. In a brutal twist of fate, Moorcroft succumbs to a deadly beating at the hunter's hands. Later, an officer named Eastman knocks on Reacher's door, requesting his presence at a meeting at the HQ. Upon returning to the headquarters, Reacher finds Morgan, a handful of officers, and a lawyer, Lieutenant Sullivan, awaiting him. He's blindsided by the accusation of Moorcroft's murder, leading to his immediate arrest and detention. In custody, Reacher uses the surveillance cameras to locate Turner. He maneuvers his way into a holding cell with his attorney, all while noting the arrival of ominous figures he suspects are there to assassinate both him and Turner. He engineers a clever distraction, sending Sullivan off to fetch him a sandwich, signaling his meeting is over. With the path clear, Reacher subdues Eastman, swipes his uniform, and makes a beeline for Turner's cell. As he anticipated, the would-be killers are already there. He swiftly neutralizes them and signals Turner. It's time to bolt. Posing as an officer, they manage to slip out of the building, commandeer a vehicle, and initiate a high-speed escape. With authorities hot on their heels, their escape plan takes an unexpected turn into a park, involving a brisk run in the morning light, and ends with them hailing a cab. Seeking refuge in an internet cafe, Turner attempts to access the files that led to her arrest. Unfortunately, this triggers alarms for the military and the hunter, alerting them of their whereabouts. Sensing the imminent danger, they bail out, knowing they are being tailed. Finding temporary sanctuary in a restaurant, they wait for their pursuer. The hunter saunters in, sparking a confrontation with Reacher who initially gains the upper hand. But as the tussle progresses, both Reacher and Turner are overpowered. Just as hope seems lost, two police officers enter the restaurant, ordering the hunter to stand down. In a brutal twist, the hunter eliminates the officers, claiming to be undercover. But not before the unexpected distraction provides enough time for our duo to make a narrow escape. Upon threatening Morgan in his home, Reacher and Turner ring out valuable information about his involvement in the conspiracy, downloading very crucial information. Later, the hunter, cold and remorseless, kills Morgan with his own phone, a murder method designed to incriminate Reacher. 
Breacher's investigation uncovers an unsettling cache of surveillance photos. He reaches out to Leach, subtly requesting her assistance. Leach breaks the news of Morgan's murder to Reacher, emphasizing that his fingerprints were found at the crime scene. A surveillance photo then reveals itself to be Sam outside her house. Alarmed by the potential danger, Reacher and Turner rush to her foster home, only to discover her foster parents brutally murdered. From her hiding place under the kitchen sink, a terrified Sam springs out, knife in hand. After calming her down, Reacher and Turner decide to whisk her away for her safety. They escort Sam to Pembroke, a private school where Turner has connections, in a bid to protect her. As Sam socializes with the schoolgirls, she reveals a phone, the one she claimed to have left back at the house. Realizing the potential risk, Reacher and Turner quickly withdraw Sam from the scene, discarding her phone to evade detection. Leech contacts Reacher again, this time with more insightful information. She reveals the existence of Daniel Prudhomme, a specialist from Afghanistan who witnessed the murders of Sibeli and Murkovich. She also mentions Parasource, a private military firm. Armed with this information, the trio formulate a plan to locate Prudhomme in New Orleans. Resourcefully, Sam produces a credit card, stolen from one of the Pembroke schoolgirls, to finance their plane tickets. Stealthily, Reacher, Turner, and Sam manage to board a plane bound for New Orleans. During the flight, Reacher spots two contractors from Parasource. Not taking any chances, he confronts each of them separately, rendering them unconscious. Returning to his seat, he pretends to be asleep while listening to Sam's conversation with Turner about the identity of her father. Upon reaching New Orleans, Reacher calls the hunter, taunting him about the incapacitated Parasource contractors. With their pursuers hot on their trail, the trio makes a run for it, managing to lose their tail by boarding a bus. On the bus, Reacher finally reveals to Sam the possibility that he could be her father. He explains that this is why she is being targeted alongside him and Turner. Initially skeptical, Sam only begins to believe Reacher's claim when he mentions the paternity suit filed by Candace, her mother. At their hotel, Sam opens up to Reacher. She admits that she instructed her mother to claim Reacher as her father, in a desperate bid to extract money from him. This revelation weighs heavily on all of them, complicating their already tangled predicament. Departing the hotel, Reacher sets out in search of Prudhomme's wife. Upon finding her, he inquires about Prudhomme's whereabouts. She claims she left him and that he's living on the streets due to his drug addiction. Returning to the hotel, Reacher finds Turner training Sam in self-defense. His stark advice to Sam is that if she only has one move, she should assume she's already dead. The following day, Reacher and Turner track down Prudhomme in an abandoned building overrun with addicts. In the dim, dingy setting, they interrogate Prudhomme about what he knows concerning the deaths of Sibeli and Murkovich, and his involvement with Parasaurus. Prudhomme explains that while on duty, Parasaurus compensated him handsomely to confirm that all weapons were accounted for, even as they stole a select few for their own illicit purposes. These weapons were then sold to warlords. However, things took a sinister turn when those same warlords attacked their convoy, resulting in Prudhomme being the sole survivor. The man from Parasaurus then decided to eliminate Sibeli and Murkovich. After witnessing this, Prudhomme returned to the States and has been living in hiding ever since. After their encounter with Prudhomme, Reacher and Turner reach out to Eastman, informing him that they have a witness who can substantiate their claims regarding Parasaurus's illegal activities. Eastman agrees to meet and hear from the witness. As Eastman is en route, unbeknownst to him, Parasaurus, having listened in on their conversation, sends assassins to intercept. As Eastman finds Prudhomme and attempts to escort him out, they are ambushed. Prudhomme is fatally shot, and Eastman comes under fire. Reacting quickly, Reacher intervenes and joins the fray. Reacher manages to blow up some barrels, taking out a number of assassins in the process. However, out of ammunition, they find themselves in a precarious position. It's then that Turner steps up, demonstrating her combat skills by taking out the last of their assailants. Watching remotely, General Harkness, the owner of Parasaurus, observes the events as they unfold. Once the dust settles, Reacher and Turner relay the entire story to Eastman, pointing to Parasaurus as the true villain. As more military officers arrive at the scene, Eastman, choosing to place his trust in Reacher and Turner, joins them in a vehicle. He divulges that six months ago, Parasaurus lost government contracts worth billions. However, against all odds, they have recently started repaying their creditors, raising suspicions about their source of income. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, Sam decides to order room service, unsuspectingly using the credit card they used for the plane tickets. This doesn't go unnoticed by Parasaurus, who quickly traces the card usage to her location. At the same time, Eastman, Reacher, and Turner are storming Parasaurus's headquarters. A tense standoff ensues as they confront the personnel, who come out guns drawn. Turner publicly accuses Harkness of arms trafficking. Upon inspection, however, the cases that Harkness and his team are carrying are found to contain opium, not weapons. 
This unexpected discovery leads to Harkness's immediate arrest. In the midst of this, Reacher receives an urgent call from Sam, who alerts him to the fact that their pursuers have tracked her down to the hotel. Without wasting a second, Reacher rushes to a nearby vehicle and begins a frantic high-speed race back to the hotel, desperately hoping to reach Sam in time. Sam, however, is one step ahead, deciding to bail from the building and merge with a bustling crowd of Halloween revelers. As Reacher and Turner scramble to reach her, the villains are in hot pursuit. The hunter dials up Jack, throwing threats his way for meddling in his affairs. But just as one of his goons gets a hold of Sam, Turner swoops in for the save. Sam bolts, while Turner deals with her adversary. The chase ramps up onto a rooftop. Jack catches sight of them and launches himself up the building. As Sam finds some cover, gunfire is directed at Turner. Jack makes his move, sending one goon over the edge. But the hunter has Sam in his sights, holding her at gunpoint on the rooftop's ledge. Reacher, ever the strategist, drops his weapon, telling the hunter they're already as good as dead. He kicks his gun towards the hunter, giving Sam the chance to disarm him. Reacher barrels into the hunter, tumbling off the roof with him. A fierce tussle ensues until Reacher finishes him off, sending him to a concrete demise. With the smoke cleared, Turner is welcomed back into her former role, with promises of keeping in touch with Reacher. The drama winds down when Sam locates Reacher in a diner. There's a tense moment as Reacher prepares to find out if he really is Sam's dad, but it turns out to be a no-go when Candace, who doesn't recognize Reacher, serves them coffee. After a heartfelt farewell and a tearful hug from Sam, Reacher finds a phone slipped into his pocket. Wrapping up the tale, we see Reacher back on the open road, hitching his next ride. A buzz from Sam's phone asks, Miss me yet? Bringing a knowing smile to Reacher's face as he sticks out his thumb for the next adventure. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.